welcome back to my channel, So Very Domestic. I'm May and I post videos about cooking, baking, cleaning, and homeschooling. Today's video is a cooking video. Five sides. Strengthening our introductions. Sprouts haul. From Prime Now. Trader Joe's haul. Today's video is actually an Instant Pot recipe video. Um, if you saw my recent Crate and Barrel birthday unboxing video, you'll see that one of the things I got this year for my birthday was an Instant Pot, and I did fall madly in love with it, as people tend to do when they receive one. Um, this is not gonna be an Instant Pot review video. There are plenty of those kicking around YouTube, and perhaps I'll make one in the future. Um, but if you're completely unfamiliar, uh, the Instant Pot is basically a modern, souped up electronic version of your grandmother's pressure cooker. So that's basically all I'm gonna say about the, the, uh, the Instant Pot itself right now. So the recipe that I'm talking about today is for hot hamburgers, which seem to be a regional thing because some people know exactly what I'm talking about and other people have zero clue what I'm talking about and they all seem to come from different areas. So I'm not entirely sure uh, where they originated or what is up with that. But I grew up in family restaurants. There were several restaurants in my family growing up and uh, they all served them the same way. So a lot of people will compare it to a Salisbury steak, but it's not quite like that. Uh, I think a Salisbury steak is like much heavier on the gravy and there's mushrooms involved. I suppose you could do that with a hot hamburger. Um, it is shaped like a patty and it's spiced more like a meatloaf than an actual hamburger, but it is shaped like a hamburger. Um, and the way that we have always served it is one or two, depending on who you're serving it to, um, is served on two pieces of untoasted bread with the crust cut off usually, although my husband insisted not to, so I guess he grew up with them with crusts on, but in the restaurants that you know we had, they always had the crusts off, but anyway. And then they're usually served alongside mashed potatoes and some other vegetable. So with this particular recipe, I went with uh, asparagus tips, but you could do any vegetable that you like. And then of course, really heavy on the beef gravy. Every single time I've made these before, I've always made them in the oven. I've never made them any other way. So making them in the Instant Pot was pretty neat. And they were so much juicier and more flavorful than they have been when I made them in the oven that now everyone is insisting that I always make them in the Instant Pot, which is fine by me. So um, this is my hot hamburger Instant Pot recipe. So in this bowl, I have about one and a half, almost two pounds of ground beef. Um, and for seasonings, I just use three teaspoons of salt-free Mrs. Dash and about one teaspoon of cracked black and pink peppercorns. And then I added in one egg, about a quarter cup of um, breadcrumbs, and then also about, I don't know, I, I chopped up an entire onion in there. And then, you know, whatever is missing from it. So I don't know, maybe half an onion, a little bit more than half an onion chopped up like that is in there as well and two teaspoons of um, minced garlic. I'm going to let it mix up a little bit more and then I'm going to shave it into patties, put on some parchment paper and then get my Instant Pot down and get that started and then I'll put them directly in the Instant Pot and show you how I'm going to do that. Okay I use my Schmidt Bros um, burger press to make these which I can't show you because it's covered in burger guts and I already washed my hands. So. Um, anyway, so I made five of them, which is good because there's five of us, and I'm gonna prepare the pot. All you really need to do is put um, this trivet in and make sure it's like obviously standing the right way so your stuff isn't touching the bottom of the pot. And I'm gonna pour in one cup of water now instead of trying to slide it under everything later. The feet of the trivet obviously are in the water, but the actual the top of it is not. So I cut two pieces of parchment paper super rough stuff that are just a little bit bigger than um, the Instant Pot itself and I'm going to like lay one in and then put in three burgers and then lay down another one and put two on top. There's a first layer of parchment paper and I'm going to put three burgers there. They are a little fiddly to make them fit but it's perfectly fine. So then I just put down the next layer of parchment paper. There's that second layer and then I have two burgers left. So I put the water in first, of course, because I didn't want to have to pour it like, you know, down the side or something. Um, yes, yeah, so the water's already in there. Our meat is in there. Now I'm just going to put the lid on. 
leave it on pressure cook and the recipe literally says 10 minutes um, and I know that with fresh meat that's entirely possible but I these are hot hamburgers not like hamburgers in the bun these are meant to have gravy on them be served with mashed potatoes and stuff so I'm actually going to leave this at um, 35 minutes and I'm just gonna start it so we'll see how long this takes to come to pressure hopefully it happens pretty quickly but I'll keep you posted I'll keep you posted oh we already have a line I'll keep you posted and in the meantime of course I'm gonna do my mashed potatoes and veggie okay it hasn't come to pressure yet and I finished peeling my potatoes and Chris is starving and poking around in the kitchen already Oh, many noise. Okay, so I'm gonna chop these up and throw them in there. The water's gonna boil 35 minutes from this exact moment, okay? This is the frozen asparagus that I use. 17 minutes left on the Instant Pot, and my potatoes are ready to be mashed. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Um, all the reading that I've done about doing hamburgers, or like patty-type ground beef concoctions in the Instant Pot, is to do the manual release. So it's not 17 minutes plus release time, it's just we're gonna hit release at 17 minutes. So first I'm gonna strain those potatoes. I find that mashed potatoes do really well in the KitchenAid, like just being in the bowl with a paddle attachment, but I'm gonna throw them through the ricer first. This is a ricer. I was first introduced to this watching Martha Stewart make mashed potatoes on her TV show maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Um, I don't know if this is a, like original intention or not, but you put the potatoes in there and then squish them through and they come out perfect and then I kind of whip them up a little bit. This is what it looks like as it comes out of the ricer. I kind of had a duh moment because Lana came in and said, oh, it makes it look just like rice. And I was like, oh, it's called a ricer, so that makes sense. Anyway, I'm just about done and uh, then I'm going to put it back on the kitchen and give it a whirl. This like takes it to the next level of mashed potatoes, you know? I've got, I think four minutes left on the Instant Pot. I'm just gonna add um, a little bit of butter to the potatoes and finish setting the table. Okay, done. This is only the second time I've ever just gonna push the button. So I'll put it under the vent. Okay, it vented. It smells really good. I'm excited to see. What's going on in here? Okay, obviously incredibly steamy. It smells really good. I'll take them all out and see what they look like. Okay, so the meat is done perfectly. These are so soft and moist. I cut the biggest one in half just to have a peek inside, make sure everything was okay. And of course, it totally is. So now I'm gonna plate these hot hamburger style. And I know this dish is called different things depending on where you're eating it in the country and probably in the world. But I grew up working in restaurants and so my family used to make them like this. Thank you so much for watching. I am really curious to know who knows what a hot hamburger is prior to this video, who calls it something else, who has no idea. Um, I would love if you could comment below if you know if you knew what it was prior to this video or not and where you're from. Um, not necessarily where you are now, but like where you were when you knew what they were, like when you had first come across them. I'm really curious about that. And if you try out this recipe, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thanks, bye.